today's video, we're gonna be doing another Will It Spike. So this will be the second one that I've done while using a continuous glucose monitor that I wear here on the back of my arm. So just to catch you up, if you're new here to the channel, I wanna say hello. My name is Barrett and the channel is called Living Life on Track. So the way that I am testing how my body responds to certain foods that I eat, is with this CGM, Continuous Glucose Monitor. This was given to me by a company called NutriSense. I find it to be a complete game changer for me. So just as a brief kind of background of what had happened, I was on a low-fat, low-cal diet plan for about the past four and a half, five years. I did have good success with it in the beginning. Then I wound up on a bit of a roller coaster with weight gain, weight loss, stubborn weight, you know, doing everything right, but everything was turning out wrong. And then the health problems started. I wound up anemic and that was a problem for a while. But along the way, what I discovered here three months ago is that my blood sugar, which I'm not diabetic, but my blood sugar went way up, like very, very close to being called diabetic. And so I have now a pre-diabetes diagnosis. So when that happened, I decided Diet aside, I have to figure out what's going on with my health. So in conversation with my doctors and my dietitian, we decided that I was going to eat low carb, not focus on weight loss, but just focus on getting the blood sugar readings down. And as a side effect, I started losing weight again, easily, happily, effortlessly with butter, cream, all of the things I enjoy and I feel better than I have in a very, very long time. So that's what prompted this. Now, if you, because everybody is different, this will give you a good baseline because people do respond to some degree similarly, but not everybody responds the same. So if you wanna figure out what is spiking your blood sugar, I will leave all the information below in the description box with a discount for the CGM that I'm wearing. The reason I like this one so much, it is a Libre, but the reason that I like this one with NutriSense so much is because the app is so awesome. And the app is free, it comes with, you know, with your CGM. They give you a free dietitian with your plan for the first 30 days. So they can interpret all the data for you. They can give you all the information that you need why is this happening? Why is my blood sugar reading high in the morning? How can I get it down? Should I take a walk after? What does this mean? Why am I spiking or dipping in the middle of the night? They are available to you basically 24 seven. So what I do is if I think of a question, I'll chat it down and I will just type it into the app and in less than 24 hours, sometimes within a couple hours, they respond and it's specific to you. It's not a bot, this is your dietitian. So I would suggest that if you want information about that, I'll have everything linked below. At least do the get started that I'm gonna leave below for you. Check out the pricing, see if it works for you. If it doesn't work now, maybe it'll work later. And always remember, they're gonna give you options. You can just wear it for a month if you want to. Totally up to you. So let's jump into these food combinations that have either spiked me or not spiked me. All right. If you watched my first one, you know that a banana is out for me. And when I'm saying spiked, by the way, I have my blood sugar, according to my dietitian, set at between 70 and 140. So anything over 140 to me, I'm gonna call a spike if it doesn't come down pretty quickly. But also, I don't want the way up and the way down. I was thinking that was a good thing, and my dietitian explained to me how it should look on the graph. So anything over 140, I'm gonna call that a spike. So when I ate a banana, it was putting me up around 185. So because my dietitian said, if you add fat, it may help, I played around with that. So a half a banana and a tablespoon of peanut butter, 138. So I'm coming in right under that graph mark that I wanna be at. Still a little bit high because it was only a half a banana. You know, what I was trying to do was be able to have banana and ice cream, let's just be real, that's what I wanted to do. But as of yet, my body's not there. It's not metabolizing sugar the way I want it to yet. But I will say it's definitely better than it was in the first month that I started this. Now I can see my whole graph has shifted down, whereas three months ago my graph ran really high. All right, so slow cooked oatmeal. I did test quick oats in my first round and it was a big time no for me. I won't eat it because it's just too high. 
but many of you said, can you try the slow cooked? And I did, and it spiked. So I added peanut butter. It was better, but it was still over 180. So I just think that for me, oatmeal is just gonna be out in the morning. I just, it's not for me. Um, Hugh, I did a huge spaghetti squash because keep in mind, portions matter on this. So portions make a difference on whether or not you're gonna spike or how you spike. All of those things play a part other than just what you're eating. Um, big spaghetti squash. I made a lasagna out of it with full fat cheese and cream and butter and it was amazing. And I had a lot of it, like half the pan. I mean, you know, like a seven by seven pan. And you know, spaghetti squash is. It's really, really low calorie. So low fat, it's, it's a healthy food. Did it spike for me? Nope, not at all. Barely, I mean, it barely made a blip on the screen for me. One cup of cooked carbonata noodles. This one was important to me because I love spaghetti. And as much as I love spaghetti squash, every now and again, you wanna feel like you're having spaghetti. So I did one cup of the carbonata. Did it spike me? I'm gonna say no, but it was close. 137 on that, which I'm, I'm good with. So I added two tablespoons of Alfredo sauce. Same, basically the same number, 135 to 138. So I'm gonna say the carbonata is a yes for me. I'll eat that. All vegetables. I eat all vegetables, except the ones I don't like. Like, I'm not a huge fan of corn. I love corn on the cob, but I'm just not a huge fan of corn. I love baked potatoes. They are out for me. I've tried potatoes in every version, and unless I have, like, maybe two little baby round potatoes, that I can do, maybe even three. But a baked potato, even if it's small, it's just a no for me. I went to 191, even on a small big potato. So I'm not gonna do that, but all other vegetables, everything, um, including carrots, which are kind of, you know, higher in sugar, including canned beets, which are higher in sugar, nothing spiked, nothing at all. So for me on my low carb plan, because remember, I'm not doing keto, I'm doing low carb. I'm eating a ton of vegetables. So asparagus, broccoli, I love all of that. Cauliflower, all good. Um, all right, I knew that I needed to test some of these things because it's important. I had a piece of chocolate cake. Not a huge one, not a huge one, a little a little square. Let's just say like half my phone, you know, like to hear like a sheet cake with icing on it. 210, 210. Can you believe that? Now, me in a former life would have thought that I could eat that chocolate cake and big deal, it's just a little teeny tiny piece of chocolate cake, who cares? Yeah, apparently my body. Ice cream, Dairy Queen, one small cone. 208. I mean, it's just eye-opening for me. Now, when I was on a low-fat, low-cal plan, I could find a way to work in a small Dairy Queen ice cream. I surely could, and I felt good about it. Did I take 10 points or something on it? Yes, but I thought I was, I was okay. That's okay. I can plan for it. Well, no, I can't plan for it because my body is telling me absolutely not. Your blood sugar is going to spike, and as a result, right on down the scientific line for me, it's going to cause me to gain weight. For those of you who are new, because I know probably some of you are thinking this, in um, three months I lost 14.1 pounds. So to give you an idea, when I'm saying as an easy side effect, that's what happened, really without even trying. The only thing I did was figure out what was spiking me. All right, Lily's chocolate chips. I can have all of them, including the white chocolate chocolate chips, all of them, as much as two servings. But when I hit three servings, because you know, I gotta push the limit, then it spiked up over 140. So I just can't overdo it. All bread, Ezekiel, which I bit the bullet for some of you and I don't even like it, but I ate a half a piece of one. So including Ezekiel, white bread, um, wheat bread, sourdough bread, I mean every bread, every bread. Good bakery bread from like Panera, which I love, the tomato basil, all of it spiked me, all of it. Now, the only one that doesn't spike me is the low carb bread, that does not spike me. But you know, I'm to the point with that where I just really don't need it. I'd rather have a cauliflower thin that I bake the heck out of in my air fryer, or anything else, a low carb tortilla wrap, something like that. 
I just, the low carb bread is fine, but I don't want to use it as a crutch, and I don't like it that much. It's fine, but I don't love it, so I don't, I don't need it in my life. And like I said, all the other bread spiked me. All yogurt, non-fat yogurt, non-fat Greek yogurt, um, 2%, 4%, 5% fat yogurt, all of them, no spike at all. Just essentially no blip on the screen, but I did have a Dannon fruit on the bottom just to kind of say, well, what will that do? And it spiked me to 148. So see, for me, why would I do that? Because I already know that I can have fruit. I tested fruit in my last video, and I know I can have anything in the berry family, anything at all. And I know a lot of you probably will ask this. What about watermelon, cantaloupe, all of those? I would never have strawberries and watermelon on the same day. And I'd never have like strawberries and cantaloupe or something like that, strawberries and a half a banana in the same meal, because that would cause a high spike in my blood sugar. And then lastly, every single meat, um, even fatty meats, ribeye steaks, filet, um, pork, pork steaks, I don't really eat pork chops, but you know, chicken, turkey, none of the meats are spiking at all. Bacon, no spike, eggs, no spike. I covered those in the first video that I did. Um, but you know, you can pretty much know that almost everything from the pantry, unless it's a low carb treat. So that all, almost all of the Atkins treats, I've tried a lot of them. And as long as I do it in moderation, as in you know, one or two a week. I don't want to have those every day because I think they would cause weight gain, but they don't cause spikes in my blood sugar. So the sugar alcohol that is in those, as long as my stomach can tolerate them, then I'm totally fine. They don't cause a blood sugar spike. So mainly for me, it's most of the processed things that I was eating that are in the pantry. All of the chips, the tortilla chips, the scoops, the Fritos, the veggie straws, the little fishies, all of those things, the Teddy Grahams. I mean, a lot of those things you could have on a low fat, low cal diet plan. But for me, for me personally, I just can't do them. So that is our next round of Will It Spike? Like I said, I will leave everything linked below for you. I do strongly suggest that if it works in your budget, at least try to wear the glucose monitor for a month because if you're struggling with your weight loss, it will really be eye opening for you. So if you have any other questions or anything you would like for me to test, please leave them down below in comments. I'll make note of it and we'll get it on the next one.